So hello guys, welcome to this video. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how you can change the progress of Zigbar when the button is pressed and held down. So uh, uh, meaning that you don't have to press the button individually or separately again and again in order to change the progress of the Zigbar. So as you can see, if I press this the, or in order to change the progress of Zigbar, all you have to do is just you have to press and then held down the button. So as you can see, the progress is getting changed automatically in the Zigbar. So now if you're ready, let's get underway. Let's build this. So for this, we are going to create new project and then here new and then new project. So it's going to be empty activity and then we are going to give our project a name. So let's say uh, volume change. Let's say volume, volume change. So finish. And then we are going to wait for some time. I think this is the, yeah, this is the new project we have just created and I think we are going to wait for some time by the time it downloads all the Gradle files. So now, as you can see here, we have, so before very first thing we are going to do is just, we are going to first uh, design the UI layout. So here in this uh, main uh, activity, mo uh, activity uh, main XML file, we will be organizing all the UI components. So first thing we are going to do is just, I'm going to delete this component. So just press down and then here, I'm sorry. So here just press this. Yeah. And then here, let's say, okay, this, let's delete this programmatically. And then here, I'm going to delete this. Now we have just deleted the text view. So here, what we're going to do is just design and then in the, in the design. So here, let's say, uh, we need text view where we will be showing the progress. And then here we have widgets. And then in the widgets, we have this, uh, Zigbar. And then here after Zigbar, we will be needing two buttons in order to change the, in order to increase as well as decrease the progress of the Zigbar. So, and then now I'm going to select all of the components by pressing the control. And then, so by doing so, as you can see, all of the components uh, has been, have been selected and then just right click on it. And then I'm going to organize chains. So here it's going to be vertical chains. And then I'm going to also constrain them uh, horizontally since we are using horizontal uh, since we are using constraint layout and then something like this. Now this, uh, is, I mean, the UI elements are, UI elements are getting constrained, uh, horizontally as well as vertically. And then I'm going to give them ID, ID. So here, if I double click and then here, this is going to be TXT, uh, progress. So this is, yep. And then we are going to refactor and then this is going to be our zigbar. So we are going to say Zigbar and then we will, uh, we will leave it unchanged. And then here, this is going to be BTN, let's say up. Sorry. So this is going to be BTN up. And then as I said, this is going to be BTN up. Yep. Okay. This is BTN up. And then this is going to be BTN down. So BTN down and then something like this. Yeah. Something like this. And then here. We are going to open this. So this is going to be TXT view. And then we are going to, let's say, increase the size. So TXT size. And then let's say, let's make it around, uh, 30 SP, 30 SP. And then I think it's normal now. And then here also we are going to, uh, kind of, I want this, uh, Zigbar to cover the layout horizontally. That's why it's going to be much parent. And then let's say, give it a little bit padding. So or maybe not padding, maybe margin. So we, let's give around 30 or maybe 20 uh, dp margin. And then here, as you can see, we have some space limit uh, remaining on the left as well as on the right side. And then here, this is going to be button and then is a name. So we are going to do something plus and then this is going to be minus. And then here, we are going to increase the txt size, txt size, and it's going to be, let's say, 4 sp and then something like this. And then I will copy this line of code and then here, Put it here because this, that's the same for all the uh, buttons or the four c components. And now let's say uh, we are going to run this in order to check how our layout looks. And I think it's going to take some take some time because as you can see, Gradle is getting built. So yeah, now if I press this buttons, nothing happens because we haven't written our logic yet. And then now once we are done with this uh, layout and now we are going to move on to this main activity dot Java file. I'm going to close this emulator and then here. So let's say, let's move something like this. And then here I'm going to declare those variables. So private and then button, it's going to be button. And then we are going to say BTN up, BTN up. And then again, private. So Oops, sorry, sorry for the typo. And private, so button, and then BTN 
uh, this time btn down and then here we have this private and then we have this private and then txt view and then txt we say progress and then after this we say private and then we say zigbar and then we have zigbar and then after this one we have this another variable so i will be explaining why i am declaring this uh, variable so private boolean and then uh, so we say up is pressed and then it's gonna be false and then another private so we have this uh, boolean again uh, boolean and then this time uh, i'll say down is pressed equals so it's gonna be false and after this one let's say we are gonna declare another variable and it's gonna be our progress which we will be uh, getting from the uh, zigbar and then after this finally we have this private and then we will be using handler and then handler equals new handler so something like this and now after this we are going to initialize all of those components we say btn up equals so find the view by id r dot resources dot id and then btn up so and then after this one btn down so equals find view what i find view by id dot so btn down and then let's say we have this txt txt progress first zigbar equals find view and then dot zigbar so zigbar and then after this one so we have this uh, txt progress equals find view by id r dot id dot txt progress and then so now we have just uh, initialized all the components and then first thing we are gonna uh, give this progress to the txt uh, txt progress so sorry txt progress dot set text and then as you probably know this progress is int that's why we are gonna uh, convert this to string for this we are gonna use this integer dot string and then here we are gonna say uh, progress and then after this one we are gonna run this one more time in order to check that our code is functioning so as you can see right now this uh, progress is zero that's why it's showing zero and now what we are gonna do is just we are gonna uh, use our zigbar so for instance when the progress uh, is changed in the zigbar it should be immediately displayed in the text view that's why we're gonna uh, write this logic so set uh, on zigbar change listener new view on zigbar change listener and then here uh, in this part so this is the action where uh, which will which happens when the progress is changed so that's why what we are gonna do is just we are gonna uh, prog we are gonna print the progress in this text progress text view set text and then here again we are gonna convert this integer dot to string and then so here we have this progress because as you can see this is the progress which we will be getting after the zigbar is changed and after this one what we are gonna do is just progress equals i because we should store the current progress uh, value of the current progress to this in this variable and then if i run this code so here as you can see now as you can see now we are getting this value and now so far everything looks good and then let's continue and then we will be using the runnable that's why so here after the on create method let me declare a new uh, runnable so runnable and then it's going to be runnable equals new and then runnable and then this is gonna be something like and then after this we are gonna have semicolon and then here is as you probably as you probably remember we have this two variables and then we will be using this variables in order to check whether the button is pressed down or not that's why here we say is up is pressed sorry so up is pressed uh, if up if up is pressed so if up if up is pressed meaning that if the, this button is pressed and then also we are going to check if so the current progress is less than so our zigbar dot get max this means if the progress is less than the maximum uh, maximum progress in this case what we are going to do is just we are going to increase the progress so in, we are going to increase the progress plus plus and then after this one we are going to zigbar dot set progress and then here this is going to be progress we are going to set the new progress and then here we are going to say handler dot post delayed and then post come on post delayed so here we are gonna this context context is this as you can see and then here it's gonna be uh yes it's gonna be this and then here we have this milliseconds so that this is the delay and after this one so we say 
uh, we are gonna continue with the next part so this is only for the uh, uh, incre increment so when we press the pre plus button the it will be it will increase increment the value of the zigbar I mean the progress of zigbar and after this one let's say we have this something like this and then if the down is pressed so if the down is pressed and also we are gonna uh, uh, declare one condition here we will be checking if the progress is uh greater than the zero uh, we are going to make sure that it is greater than zero so that we will not run into any problem and then here we are going to say progress minus minus and then here semicolon here zigbar so dot and then in the zigbar we say set progress so set progress we are going to set the current progress and after this one we are going to also use handler dot post delay so in the post delay so this is going to be runnable runnable this and then here we will be uh, putting the delay which is a uh, second parameter here is which is 100 milliseconds and then once we are done this part we are gonna write so this is uh, right now we are inside the on create so inside the on create what we're gonna do is just we are gonna now we are gonna work on with the uh, we are gonna work on the button so here it's gonna be btn up dot set uh, on touch listener and then here new set on touch listener so as you can see and then here on touch listener we are going to declare switch it's the switch case and then here we say motion event dot get action so we are going to determine whether the button is pressed or not and then here it's the curly brackets and here inside it, we are going to have two cases uh, one is the button is pressed and another one is the button is not pressed so case and then here in this case motion event so motion event dot action so action action down this means when the button is pressed what we are going to do is just uh, we are going to change the value of this up is pressed it's going to be true and after this one we are going to do say handler and then uh, dot so post and then in the so here we are going to post runnable and after this one we are going to break out of this case now once we are done with this new case i mean the first case and then we are going to continue with the second case and in this case we are going to check uh, if the button is not pressed so it's gonna be motion event dot action so action is gonna be action and then it's gonna be up meaning that the button is released released and then here we are gonna say we don't need this handler because we will not be using handler anymore just we are gonna uh, change the value because uh, this uh, if this is false uh, up up is pressed is false if is it's if it's if this is false it mean, this means that we are gonna just break because if this is false it means that this part will not work as you can see if up is pressed meaning that if it's true this will work otherwise it will not work that's why we are gonna we are gonna set it uh, set it to false so that it will not i mean this uh, part of the code will not run so basically this is the part for the up button i mean in order to increase the uh, progress of the zigbar and then here we are gonna continue with the another button which is btn down btn down so as i can set on touch listener new v1 touch listener and then here we are gonna write switch so switch and then here we as i said it's gonna be motion event so get action and then here after this curly the brackets here we are gonna get first case and it's gonna be motion so just a second motion event motion event dot action down meaning that the, when the button is pressed so we are gonna say uh, down is so it's not sorry and then it's gonna be down is pressed and it's gonna be true so that the handler can work and after this one we are gonna say uh we are gonna use handler dot post and then in the post we are gonna say runnable we are gonna give runnable as an input so in that after this one we are gonna say break out of the case and we have another case so which is motion motion so it's gonna be action and then it's gonna be action when the button is released released and then it's gonna be we don't need this yeah we need this down piece pressed equal so this is gonna be false and then after this one we are gonna do something like this and then we say handler so we don't need this handler sorry and then here we say break and then control l so basically we are done with this part and now what we are gonna do is just we are gonna run our application so that i, I hope it, it doesn't have any it doesn't contain any errors so now if i press this as you can see if i press this the value of the or the progress of the zigbar is getting increased and if i press as you can see the value of the zigbar is getting decreased and then here as you can see it is pretty much slow that's why 
we can change this so in order to change this let's say let's set it to one so that it means that the delay is one millisecond so that i think this is the maximum value and then so if i press as you can see the value is changing pretty much quickly and then something like this and also if you want you can set different speed uh, for the decre de decrement and increment for instance uh, let's say i want to increase the value fast but to decrease it slowly for this what we're gonna do is just let's say i want to increase it fast so let's say uh, something like uh, one and then uh, for the decrease let's say it's gonna be 200 and then let's run this one more time so that we can notice the difference so if i press as you can see it's increasing fast fast but when i press as you can see it is kind of dropping very slowly and then something like this so depending on your preference you can modify this code i mean this and delay so guys this is basically that's it and i will be providing you with the full code in the github repository so thank you so much for watching have a good time